Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Etherfields, designed by Mikhail Orax and published by Awaken Realms. This is a fully sleeve, fully expanded copy of the game that's organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, as well as facilitate the game while it's being played. We've stored all of the components across several boxes, but they're organized in a logical way to help you get in and out of your Etherfield sessions. If you have any questions about what you see here, please let me know down in the comments below. And for links to everything that I talk about in this video, please take a look in the description. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. And for those of you already subscribed, thank you so much for the continuous support. Let's get started organizing Etherfields. Before we begin, there are three quick things I want to mention. Starting off with a big thank you to Awaken Realms for sending us a copy of the Alternative Creatures of Etherfields and the Alternative Advanced Heroes of Etherfields. We are missing these two miniature boxes boxes for a all-in organizing video, and so now we have them. Not only do we have all the gameplay content, but also all of the cosmetic content here organized in a logical fashion. So thank you so much to Awakened Realms for sending us copies of these for organizing purposes. The next thing I want to talk about is the playmat for the game. We store our playmat in an architect tube here. They've got this unscrollable cap that you can also affix the art of the game to, so that way you can differentiate them from your other large campaign games with these big playmats. It's got an adjustable height here, so you just slide it like so, and then you can either extend it or shorten it, and then you simply dump out your playmat and you're ready to go. I'll leave a link in the description once again for everything that I talk about in this video. And the last thing I want to mention is the lid lift for the core box of the game. We've got about an inch and a half, two inches here of lid lift, and that's due to the fact that we are storing the creatures, the miniatures for Etherfields, inside of the core box. You'll see when we open the lid up in a second, so that has added some lid lift. And if you want to avoid this lid lift, you can just simply keep those miniatures inside of their creatures of Etherfield boxes. Now, the reason that I've gone ahead and kept them in the main box here is you pretty much use them every single game, so there's no reason to actually keep them in their own separate box, as that's just just more boxes and more lids that you have to open. If you want to make sure there's no lid lift though, you can definitely remove that, or you can also remove the main game board from Etherfields here if you're using the playmat, and that will reduce the lid lift by about half an inch and will help out with it. So that's a quick recommendation here for reducing lid lift if you want. Just keep those creatures of Etherfields in their original boxes like so, instead of keeping them in the core box. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started organizing Etherfields. We'll lift off the lid here, and inside you'll see that we have our creatures of Etherfields on top. As mentioned before, you're going to be using these miniatures a lot during your playthroughs of Etherfields, particularly these core creatures. Now, you're going to be using them in your slumbers, your main missions, so it's nice to have them readily available so you can grab the specific model that you need for whatever dream or slumber that you're on. So we've gone ahead and kept them here. You just simply put that on the table and then lift off that lid and it's readily available to take the miniatures from. Now's a good time to explain where we are currently in the Etherfields campaign, as well as how many players that this organization system is set up for. Now, currently, we have completed all of the content from the core box and are in the middle of the Harpy and She-Wolf campaigns for Etherfields. We finished the Harpy one completely, and we're in the middle of the She-Wolf campaign currently. Now, there will be some light spoilers for all of the content up to this point, but we won't get into any of the details, we won't read any scripts, anything like that, more of showing you where we're storing the components and potential unlock that you'll get as you play. This does include things like the Dream World map and some of the bonuses that your characters can get. This is also organized with a single character in mind, as I do think that the solo mode is my favorite way to play this. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and continue on with the organizing. Underneath our Creatures of Etherfields, we have our new updated rulebook, followed by your secret scripts for your current campaign. As mentioned before, we're in the Harpy and She-Wolf campaign, and then you're going to need the secret scripts for all of the core game stuff, as you will be referencing this throughout all of your different campaigns. Next up are your two pages that hold all of your Dream World maps, followed by your binder page that holds all of your different wisdom cards. Next up, you have your game board. That brings us to our main section of the box here, starting off with all of your different character sheets. This is going to include the characters as well as their awakened versions, and it does include your fifth player expansion, the Reaper here. That's all in just one stack there. To the right of all your character boards, you'll have your current expansion miniatures. This includes all of your big boss miniatures for the She-Wolf and the Harpy campaign. And then lastly, the flying cat miniature that you'll be able to utilize no matter what campaign you're playing once you've unlocked it. 
As you can see, we've gone ahead and trimmed a lot of the edges of the different organizers. Using just a simple pair of scissors, we've gone ahead and make sure that they were rounded so that nothing's sharp, so nothing hurts you as you're digging into the different component trays. We've also done the same thing to lots of the different miniature trays from the expansions and made them a lot more modular so you can slide them in and slide them out, as well as reduce a lot of that empty space that let the expansion boxes have so we can reduce the overall amount of boxes that we're storing in dramatically. So that's a general tip for all of your different organization here. Trim those sides make sure they're not sharp, and then make it so that you can easily take them in and out of these different areas. Moving forward, you're going to have two envelopes here. This first one is going to hold a bunch of different tiles. Now, there are some slight spoilers in here for that Harpy campaign, but we'll open it up and you'll see that we have two large tiles that relate to some of the new alternate game modes, and then lastly, some unlockable content, new special abilities for your different characters. So when you do decide to bring out those characters, in addition to their boards, they'll use those new special abilities. So that's all just be stored in one of these envelopes. The second envelope is used as more of a trash envelope. This is just going to store a variety of different tokens, all of these vision tokens and some of the morphine tokens, anything that you do remove throughout your gameplay experience, you can toss in here so when you're ready to reset, you have a spot that has all of the tokens so they're easily resettable. Underneath our envelopes, you have these small toolbox organizers. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description below, but I love the way that you just simply open the lid and everything is organized and ready to go. They're nice and flat, so they're able to store some components very well, and the edges are also curved, so it's easy to bring things out. So we're going to be using two of these for this organization method. Each of these organizers is going to have a variety of components that you'll be using in each of your gameplays, and you're not sure what mission is going to have what available, so it's nice to have everything just at your disposal. First off, you have all of your different intent markers, your story tokens, your no entry tokens, your crystal gems here, your shining gems, your character tokens specifically for the free spirit, some unlockable tokens, different terrain markers, some of the different vision tokens, specific tokens for specific cards, so it's not going to get into too much there, and then status conditions here. So that's all in one of these containers. In our second container, you're going to have these generic purple tokens, your white, red, and clear tokens, and then your character's current token. So right now, our character that we're using currently has two of these white tokens available, and they're using one of these clear tokens to track things. You also have your different dice and then your pool of keys that you currently don't have. If you have unlocked something, you can put it into this main area, or as you'll see later, you can put it in the deck box of the character that you're using. Moving on to this upper right corner, you have the deck box for your character. You just lift off the lid like so, and you'll have your character's influence deck, any reference cards, and then lastly, the tokens that are for that specific character. Right now we're playing the gambler, so all the gambler's tokens are in there. Just put that lid back on, and you're ready to go. Moving to this middle section, it remains pretty much unchanged. We've got a silica gel packet in here for freshness, and then we've gone ahead and trimmed the side here to make sure that all of our components could fit in that right area. But the trays themselves will easily come out like so. This is going to contain all of your dreamers, your shapeshifters, so you'll be pretty much using this every single game, as well as your time marker and your group token for the dream world map. We'll just return that lid like so. And underneath the small miniature tray, you have one of your boss miniatures, as well as your Thor Knight miniature, and then the Lucid Dream Mode versions of your standard four miniatures here. Moving on to the left side, you'll have some of your every game cards, as well as your current character cards, influence market, and item deck. So this first stack that's not separated by any dividers is pretty much your every game cards. This includes your search deck, it includes your shifting story deck, it includes your dream world, your endless forest card, your current season, and the rest of the season cards all of your flaw cards, you've got your turn cards, your fate cards, and then you have your current item deck, and lastly you'll have all of your different note cards that you've collected. These are things like the flying cat, as well as any abilities that you've unlocked, your shopping cards, and then any of the nodes, basically everything that you've unlocked and is at your disposal from your experiences. So that's all in this left stack here, and you're going to be putting these out into the different sections of the table when you're ready to start your play session. Continuing on this left side, you're going to have all of your item cards that currently aren't in your item decks. This is your item market. You'll have your influence market. These are all of the cards that you can purchase for your new deck. And then you'll have the divider that's specific for your character. As mentioned before, we're currently using the gambler. So this is going to have all of your influence cards that you're not currently using, as well as ones that are specific for the gambler. And it's also going to have all of your cards for the lucid mode behind this do not open this deck card. They've got that specific white back 
there, so you know that they're not going to be in your normal deck. So that's all of your gambler cards in that left section there. And our last two sections have all of your components for the Thorn Knight here, if you do decide to switch into this character, as well as your 52 card deck of regular playing cards, if you are deciding to use that in your Etherfields experience. So that's all of the cards on this left side here. So that's everything inside of our core box here for Etherfield. Let's go ahead and pack it up. We'll start off by returning all of our every game cards to this left side, as well as a block of foam here just to make sure everything stays snug. Next, we'll return our small box of miniatures to the center, as well as a silica gel packet for freshness. In the upper right corner, we'll place your deck box for your current character, followed by two organizers here that just store your varied components in these small organizers. And those will fit snugly in this bottom right section. Next up, we'll return our two envelopes with our tiles, as well as our removed tokens. We'll place all of our current campaign miniatures, in this case, the She-Wolf and Harpy miniatures, and then all of your character boards in the center there. On top of that, we'll place our main game board, followed by all of our wisdom cards. Next up are our two pages of our dream world map, followed by all of your rule books and script books. And we'll cap it off with all of the creatures of Etherfield's miniatures. And that's everything inside of our core box for Etherfield's. Let's continue our organization of Etherfields with the sleeves box here. Not only does Awaken Realms provide sleeves for the games and all of the accurate sizes, but they also have boxes that are built specifically to store sleeved cards in a logical way. Etherfields is no exception. Let's take a look at how we organize the sleeves here. Let's lift off the lid, and inside you'll see that we have all of our sleeved cards in three distinct columns. Let's start with the left side of the box here. We have all of our smaller cards that we have organized based on their letter and number in this upper right corner. So every single single card is going to follow this specific convention, so just make sure that they're organized by Roman numeral as well as number, and then the specific card letter. So that's going to be the same way for all of these small cards here, and then make it all the way up this left side. Now you're also going to have a divider in here that separates all of your removed cards. So everything behind this has been removed from the game for some reason, and then any other remaining cards that don't fit on that left side are actually going to be stored on this right side here in this central area like so. So all of those are also removed. So just kind of think of it as an extension from this left side to this right side here. So those are all of our current available cards, as well as all of the removed cards in the back here. This middle section is going to have all of your large tile cards, starting off with this first area, which is all of your currently available and every game cards. As mentioned before, this is going to have your current character special ability, you'll have all of your available Dreamgate tiles, and then if you keep on going, you'll have your Dreamscape map for all of your slumbers, the potential new tiles that you can add to it, and then your slumber deck, which is going to be at whatever state that you left it when you stopped playing your game. So generally, when you do do the awakening process, you'll reshuffle this slumber deck. So these are always going to be set up for each game, which is why they're sitting at the front of all of these dividers here. Just like these smaller cards, these next tiles are all organized based on this upper right section. It's going to have the Roman numeral as well as the number, and then either set up or followed by some letters. So make sure that you organize them appropriately all for this available area. And then, just like the left side here, you're going to have the area in the back. That's all of your removed tiles. So everything that's going to be removed is on the back side here, and if there's any left over, you put it on this right side like so. So this is just a continuation of all of the removed cards and removed tiles on this right side here. Before we move on to this final right section, let's quickly talk about how we keep everything in its own specific column. We've actually trimmed one of the other boxes here, and so you have these cardboard dividers that are keeping all of the cards in nice columns. Now you're just going to simply tuck them like so, and it'll make sure that during transportation, nothing is shifting around and keeps things nice and organized. Moving on to the right side, you'll have all of the different masks that your character has available. You'll have the cards with their actual deck box, but the masks themselves will all be stacked here. So that's all of the different masks that we have available for that gambler character. Tucked in the upper right section, you'll have all of the masks that are not available for your character, and you'll simply move them from pile to pile as you unlock more masks during your journey. So the masks that you're not using in that upper right section. Tucked into the right side here, you're going to have your remaining dividers for all of the different sections that you're not using, and if you feel like separating anything later when more cards are unlocked. You also have several silica gel packets in here for freshness. Next up, we have a small draw bag here for your morphine tokens. Now, throughout the game, you're going to be drawing these morphines, which are going to change up the aspects of the entities that you face. So we've kept them all in here, so whenever you have to draw one randomly, you simply reach in, and then you pull out this specific token. And that way, you don't have to worry about setting it up or shuffling any piles, and then you just return them to the bag like so. We use small microfiber drawstring bags from the BGG store. They come in all different colors, but I really like the white bag color myself, as it fits with the theme of Etherfields. As I'm sure you'll notice, we also use coin 
morphing capsules for our morphing tokens. This is so that you're making sure that are not damaged as you are going to be pulling these out pretty frequently and you make sure that you're never sure which token that you're going to be pulling out. So you're going to store them into those coin capsules. It also increases that tactile feeling when you're pulling them out from the bag. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find coin capsules for your game, but I do want to quickly give you some advice if you do decide to use them. There is a bit of plastic that's sometimes on these coin capsules, and it's best to go ahead and trim those with an X-Acto knife to make sure you're getting a nice smooth feeling whenever you're pulling from the bag. And that way you're never going to be nicking your fingers on these coin capsules. So just a quick tip here, but link in the description below for these coin capsules. Continuing on this right side, you'll have some of your extra sleeves just in case. This is a deck building game, so you are going to be shuffling and playing cards a lot. So if something does get damaged, you have some extra sleeves in here. Followed by another small bag that's going to hold some of your key tokens. Now, as you play, you are going to unlock these special keys, and you can use these as visual reminders. I myself just like having the cards in one area, but you can use these key tokens and then place them with your character box. So all of those keys are in here and another small tiny bag in this bottom right section. And that brings us to our last section of cards in this upper right here. We talked about how these are all removed cards from the game, but back here you'll have all of your remaining decks for your different characters. For example, you have your tough guy here, you'll have all of the tough guy cards, and then their lucid mode tough guy cards. So every single character is just here that you're currently not playing. We'll go ahead and return the tough guy back to the box, and that is everything inside of our sleeve box here for Etherfields. Let's go ahead and pack it up, starting off in this bottom right section with your extra sleeves, followed by your small bag with those metal silver keys. So we'll put those in the bottom right section. We'll return our silica gel packets to that upper right corner, followed by your dividers that you're currently not using and your mask that you currently aren't using. We'll then return our bag of morphine tokens to this right side, followed by all of your currently unlocked masks, and then finishing off with your every game large tile cards. Those will go in that middle column like so. And that's everything inside of the Etherfield sleeve box. Now's a good time to talk about the alternative creatures of Etherfield's box. Now, currently, we've gone ahead and kept these creatures in their own separate box here. In our spot in the campaign, we haven't actually called for any of these miniatures, but I imagine they're going to be coming later in the Sphinx campaign. So you can store these just as we do the original creatures of Etherfield's in that core box when the time comes. But for right now, we do just have them in their own separate box like so. Lift the lid, and then this is going to be another tray that you just leave on the table. You could even remove that plastic cover if you'd like to for one less thing that you got to remove each time. So that's everything in the alternative creatures of Etherfield's box. And that brings us to our final box. This is the Etherfield Stretch Goals Harpy and She-Wolf campaigns box. Now this box is going to be used for all of your inactive components. These are things from other campaigns, script books, deck boxes for players that you're not using, as well as all of the tokens for different player components and pieces. We'll take a look through this box and see exactly how it's all stored here, and that way you can reduce how many total boxes you're keeping all of your unused components in. Let's lift off the lid, and inside you'll see that we have our Sphinx campaign script book on top. Let's move that to the side, and underneath you'll have your letter from Awakened Realms that also includes all of the rules to the additional modules that came with the second wave of Etherfields. Next up, you have your save sheets if you plan on using those, plus these small boards that are going to be used for specific dreams, I imagine. Don't know the details on these quite yet, so they're in here for now. And then lastly, for our paper components, our Etherfield's Funeral Witch Secret Scripts. Moving on to our main section, we have our three trimmed inserts from the different expansion components, including the alternative hero miniatures, the Sphinx campaign, as well as the funeral campaign, which bosses all in their own separate trays. Once again, we've trimmed those sides so that they're not sharp and they're modular in nature so you can fit them where they need to go inside of this box here. Underneath those miniatures, we have some silica gel packets in here for freshness, in addition to some of your map tile dividers, and then your replaced map tiles for the updated components here with the 2.0 rules. So these are all just going to be in here just in case maybe you need to revert back to them. And that brings us to the last set of components here. These are the four deck boxes that are not currently in use. And inside of each, you'll have some components from inactive characters. For example, you have the green player tokens here for their visions that they can use to get those additional bonuses and story beats. You'll have your tokens from the miniatures that have been replaced. So these are going to be the artwork version if you do want to keep those. And then even in some of them, you'll have some of the miniatures for the unused characters. Like you'll have the fifth player Reaper miniature in here. So all those will be stored in all of the different deck boxes like so. So that's everything inside of our Harpy and She-Wolf campaign box or our everything else box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. Let's start off by returning those deck boxes to the left and right sides. 
We'll put in those replaced tiles and tile dividers, as well as some silica gel packets for freshness. We'll place the alternative Advanced Heroes of Etherfield in the center there. And lastly, we'll place the bosses from the Funeral Witch, as well as the Sphinx campaign, in this bottom section. We'll return our paper components, including the Funeral Witch Secret Scripts book on this left side, followed by these large map boards. Up next are our save sheets, as well as our updated modules and rulebook. And we'll top it off with the secret scripts for the Sphinx campaign. And that's everything inside of our Etherfield Stretch Goals Harpy and She-Wolf campaigns box. And that is organizing Etherfield. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. And once again, for links to everything that I talked about in this video, please take a look in the description. Another special thank you to Awaken Realms for sending us those missing miniatures. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope you find this useful. How do you organize your copy of Etherfields? What do you think about the game so far? Which campaign are you currently on? Which dreamer are you using? And what do you think of the world building of Etherfields in general? Love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Side Game Strong.